Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. If you have ever created a card visual to display key metrics like for example sales by category but wished you could filter the entire report just by clicking on this particular card. As you probably know the default card visual in Power BI doesn't allow slicing or filtering by itself. So if you have created a card to display the sales by category like the one I have created here, you can display the data but you can't filter your report page by just interacting with this particular card. That's why in this tutorial I'm going to show you a workaround which will replace your standard card visual by using another visual which will look exactly like card but it will give you the functionality of filtering. For example if I choose bakery here you see the visuals that I have in my report are getting sliced for that particular category. If I click on food grains I have the data here being displayed for food grains category. By the end of this video you'll be able to create dynamic card like visuals that not only look great but also allow you to filter your report directly. No more static cards just powerful interactive visuals. Before we dive in, if you are excited to learn more about Power BI hacks like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this one. Now the cards that you see here are basically created using the new card visual that is available in Power BI. I'm going to quickly copy this visual here and go to the duplicate of page 2 and paste that here so that we get a quick idea as to how that particular visual is looking and then we create a new one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the new slicer visual that is available and then I'm going to bring in the category that we want to display in our slicers. I have four different categories here that I want to display. Now let's quickly go to the format tab and play around with the settings in the format tab here so that our visual is looking just like the card that we have here. So first of all I'm going to turn off the title because we don't need the title to appear on our cards here and then head over to the shape section under shape here I'm going to choose a rounded rectangle and then you can choose the pixels of your choice I'm going to enter 15 here and then let's head over to the next section here which is the layout. In my current layout here of the slicer I have the categories here appearing in two different rows however I want them to appear in one single row so I'm going to change that and what I'm going to do here is max rows shown I'm going to change that to one and then column shown I'm going to increase that to four so that I have all four categories appearing in my visual and then I can also slightly increase the space between the buttons here to maybe about 15 pixels that looks nice. And now let's head over to the next section here which is the callout values. Under callout values make sure your apply settings to state is set to default and then you have your value section which will if you toggle this off you don't have the category names that will appear here. When you turn them on you have the category names appearing on your slicer and then let's scroll down we are interested in the label section here. Now if you look at the slicer that we have here it is only displaying the category names it is not displaying the values that we want to display. So we will make use of this label function here which will let you add the values as well into the slicer and let's click on add data in my measures table I have a measure here created called total sale I have the total sales measure here which is nothing but the calculate and sum of order sales amount I have added that particular label in here and you can see that the values are now being displayed however I want them to appear in millions and not just the values here so let's quickly go back to our total sales measure now let's use the format function here I'm going to call the format function here followed by a comma and then I'm going to open double quotes here since I want to format this in millions I'm going to type in zero here followed by a comma this comma here basically represents that we are dividing the value here by thousand when I enter another comma here this means that we are now dividing the value here by a million so that we get the value here in millions and then followed by a point and 0 0 which means that we need two decimal places here I'm going to close the quotes here close the bracket and confirm and now you can see that we've started to display this in millions 2.55 million 1.92 million however I would like to add the dollar sign here as the prefix to my value and then the letter M to display that this is in millions as a suffix so I'm going to add the dollar sign here just before the zero here and at the end I'm going to add M here and then click on confirm and now you can see that we've started to display the value here in dollars 2.55 million 1.92 million etc let's close this now let's head back to the format section here let's scroll down and the position here of pine label you can choose where you want to display the value right now it says below value I'm going to choose above value here so that my value is displaying on the top 
And then you can also change the space between the label and the value. I'm going to increase this to, let's say about five pixels and then let's scroll up a little and then let's increase the size here of my label to about 25 and change the color here to black. And now I'm going to scroll up a little and then change my horizontal alignment here to center. And now let's change the color here of the values. Instead of having this in dark black, I would like to make this a little lighter, maybe about 40% lighter. And I'm happy with how this is looking right now. Let's close the callout values here. Let's scroll down this uh, button section here. And then let's change the apply settings here to default. And then let's scroll down. I would like to add an accent bar here that I have on the left hand side. And then let's scroll down to the accent bar, expand the accent bar here. The position, you can choose the position here of the accent bar. For now, I'm going to leave it at the left and then change the color here of the accent bar and then increase the width, maybe about 15 pixels. Or maybe if you want more, you can increase the pixels to let's say about 20. That's I think what I have on my card here. And then let's also add a shadow here if you would like. And that shadow is now looking nice. And now you can also see that when I hover over this particular category, the color is slightly changing. Let's make some more changes to that. So I'm going to go to the button section here and then apply settings to I'm going to choose hover and then the fill section here. I'm going to change the fill color here to maybe let's say about 20% darker. And now when I hover over this particular value, you can see that the color is changing of that particular category. Now let me remove the card slicer that I have here because we've created the slicer, which is very similar to what we have created using the cards here I'm going to delete this and now when I select this slicer here let's go back to buttons and then let's scroll down when I select a particular category here for example when I select four grains you can see that it is now turning into black let's go to the fill section here I would like to change the fill color here to maybe something different maybe this color here and that is looking nice for now in the call out value section let's expand this and then let's head over to the selected section here and now I can change the value here to black so that when I select this, the value here is appearing in black. And let's also change this to hover. When I hover over these categories here, I want the font size to increase a bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the font size to about 14. And now you can see that when I hover over this particular category, the font size of the values is slightly increasing. And then let's quickly do the same thing here for labels as well. I'm going to increase the size here to let's say about 28. And now what happens is when I hover over this, you can see that there's a slight animation that is happening here, which is increasing the size of my text here and displaying it. And then when you click on this, you have a different color being displayed. And now you can also see that the visuals below here are getting filtered as well based on the selection that you make from these categories. And that's it. We have now transformed the static card visual into a powerful interactive slicer in Power BI. No more static cards, just dynamic filter ready visuals that make your report way more intuitive. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more Power BI tips and tricks and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Got any questions or ideas for future videos? Drop them in the comment section below. I would love to hear them from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.